Laryngectomy is an operation that uh, changes one's form and function. One alteration of the form and function of the larynx is reduced humidification because uh, we're no longer breathing through the nose. So a uh, simple uh, good means of replacing that is provided by the ATOS Medical uh, Provox HME uh, humidification system. This program will help to explain how the use of this system for patients and caregivers. So even though we may lose some form and function, there are means of correcting and replacing these functions so that quality of life will be preserved. The difference between a laryngectomy and a tracheostomy is pretty simple. So a total laryngectomy no longer has a larynx, so they're only breathing through that permanent opening at the base of their neck called the stoma. However, with the tracheostomy, the patient may be breathing both through their trach tube as well as through their mouth and their nose because they still have a larynx. So that's the difference. So someone who's a total laryngectomy, you never want to plug a tube that's in their airway because that is their only way of breathing. You never want to put on a one-way speaking valve in that patient because they don't have the ability to exhale with that one-way speaking valve. So when you approach the patient at the bedside, they may have a Larry tube in immediately postoperatively, or they might have a laryngectomy trach tube in place. It's really important when you approach the patient that you know the patient's history and to read their chart because they may look like a normal trach patient and they're actually a total laryngectomy. In case of an emergency, it's really important that if a patient needs oxygen, that that oxygen is placed directly over the stoma. It's not placed with a nasal cannula because that's not going to help them at all because remember, they breathe through that stoma. They do not breathe through their mouth and their nose any longer. So therefore, if you're going to perform CPR and airway resuscitation is needed, you need to perform that via the stoma. Post laryngectomy, the patient's aerodigestive tract is completely separated. Therefore, they're no longer breathing through their mouth and their nose. They're only breathing through a permanent opening at the base of the neck called the stoma. The patient is no longer able to smell. They have the loss of heating, filtering, and moisturizing that incoming air that they're breathing. When they go to cough, they're coughing from the stoma. They're not coughing from their mouth and their nose any longer. And the patient can have a significant amount of mucus. If you think about us sitting here right now, we're breathing in the air um, that's probably about 72 degrees with a relative humidity of about 45% and it's really ambient dirty air. By the time you and I actually, that air hits our trachea, it's at a body temperature, 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit with a relative humidity of about 100% and that's filtered pristine air that we're breathing in. After a total laryngectomy, Remember, they're not breathing through their mouth and their nose any longer. So what happens is, is that ambient dirty air, that's a relative humidity of about 45% and a, the temperature of about 72 degrees is no longer heated and moisturized. So therefore, what happens in the airway is that the patient has a significant amount of mucus production. So your airway has these little tiny hair-like projections called cilia. Cilia really is responsible for pushing mucus out of the airway as well as removing large debris within your airway. But the way the cilia work is that you have to have adequate heat and moisture in order for them to function. So if there is loss of moisture in the air, what happens is, is when the, the relative humidity dr drops below 70%, they already start impairing their activity. But if they drop below 50%, those cilia completely cease activity. So what happens is, is that the patient has difficulty clearing mucus from the airway, significant amount of mucus is produced. And there are many things that can impact the ciliary function other than just humidity. So things like dust, pollen, um, pollution, smoking, bacteria, viruses, those can actually affect the ciliary function as well, leading to difficulty expelling the mucus from the airway as well as an increase in mucus. Here's how a heat and moisture exchanger or an HME works. 
The HME actually has a foam core, which is a hygroscopic material, which means that it helps retain moisture. So as you exhale, that natural heat and moisture in your lungs gets trapped within that foam core so that when you go to breathe back in, it heats the air, it moisturizes the air, and becomes a logical barrier for any irritants that are in the air. Research has also found that in extremely warm or hot temperatures, that not only does it provide moisture, but it also acts almost like a coolant, cooling that air. Here's a short video that will demonstrate how the cilia work and how the HME can impact your airway. How is the pulmonary environment affected if you inhale through a tracheostoma instead of your nose? Let's remove the HME and travel into the airways. We have millions of tiny hairs called cilia that sweep back and forth, transporting mucus away from the airways. The mucus traps the dust and germs in the air that we breathe in. The cilia sweep back and forth about 10 times per second. At the microscopic level, we can see how, without the use of an HME, the unconditioned air is affecting the airways. The dry air is causing the cilia to move slower and mucus is building up. The drier the inhaled air, the lower the activity of the cilia. At a relative humidity of about 35%, they come to a complete standstill and more thick mucus builds up. Now let's see what happens when an HME system is used. Now the inhaled air is moisturized thanks to the HME. The cilia resume their activity and the situation normalizes. You might experience increased coughing and mucus production during the first period while the lungs are clearing the built-up mucus. The use of an HME will most likely have a significant impact on your daily life. Other users report less coughing, less mucus production, less stoma cleaning and better sleeping. Change the HME every 24 hours. To fully benefit, you need to use the HME day and night. Remember, it's your new nose. The Larry tube is one way actually to house the HME. It's a soft silicone tube that is designed to not only house the HME, but to keep your airway open during the healing process. It's also designed to act as a way of differentiating a trach patient from a total laryngectomy. As a trach patient would not be using a Larry tube, and a Larry tube is only used for someone who's a total laryngectomy. The, the Larry tube can be placed immediately postoperatively in the OR. Here at Florida Hospital, the Larry tube is placed once the patient is comfortably breathing on their own. The Larry tube comes in the Provox laryngectomy pulmonary kit. The kit includes a Larry tube, a box of 30 extra flow HME cassettes, a Provox shower aid, a Provox tube holder, six of the tube brushes, and care tips, educational material for the patient. There are several education pieces within the laryngectomy pulmonary kit. The first one is a speech menu that can help you communicate with others while you're in the hospital. Then there is a bedside instruction sheet that lists out step-by-step -step how to care for the Larry tube as well as the HME. Also, you'll find several different care tips that are written instructions step-by-step not only how to care for your Larry tube and your HME, but also how to care for your voice prosthesis. What is very helpful when you go home is there's some emergency procedure cards as well as a DVD that you could take to your emergency medical service in your area to make them aware of how to do rescue breathing for someone who's a total laryngectomy. There's also an emergency card that you can place in your wallet that will explain to an emergency personnel how to do rescue breathing for someone who's a total laryngectomy. <music> to place the Larry tube, you simply lubricate the outside of the tube with a water-soluble lubricant such as Surgilube or KY Jelly. Once it's lubricated, you gently slide it into the stoma. If it's not easily placed, by gently sliding it into the stoma and or the stoma starts to shrink, you can gently fold the tube in half like a taco to place it into the stoma. Once it's placed, then just release it and it opens up into the stoma. To secure the Larry tube, you use the 
Provox tube holder that's provided in the kit. You can place the tube holder onto the Larry tube either prior to placing the tube or once the tube is in place. Once attached to the tube, the Velcro is gently secured to the back of the neck. So you could cut the neck strap to make it adjustable for the patient depending on the diameter of their neck. Once the Larry tube is secured, the HME is attached by gently lining up the HME to the inside of the Larry tube and snapping it into place with the tan or the white button facing out. The HME should be worn 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The HME should be replaced every 24 hours in order to reduce the risk of bacteria within the HME. If a patient anticipates a cough about to happen, it is important to remove the HME. In order to do so, you're gonna secure the Larry tube with one finger as you remove the HME with the other. This is done in order to prevent the HME from getting clogged with mucus, which can increase their breathing resistance. Once the patient is finished coughing and they've wiped away all the secretions, the HME then can be placed back onto the Larry tube. Because the patient is breathing only through the stoma, it's important to cover the stoma when taking a shower. The pulmonary kit also includes a shower aid to protect the patient's stoma while they're taking a shower. So prior to taking a shower, you would remove the HME cassette and you would place the shower aid onto the Larry tube with the rectangular portion of the shower aid facing downward. Prior to cleaning, you would remove the Larry tube by releasing the Velcro strap at the base of the neck and then you slide the Larry tube forward. The Larry tube should be cleaned at least twice a day or if there's a significant amount of mucus within the tube itself. In order to clean the Larry tube, you're gonna use the two brushes that are in the kit, along with a non-abrasive liquid soap, such as ivory soap. You want to avoid any antibacterial soaps, as many times the ingredients of those antibacterial soaps may dry out the silicone of the Larry tube. You're going to do this by taking the brush, inserting it into the Larry tube to loosen up any mucus that's within the tube. Then you're going to clean it with the soapy water then you're going to rinse it with clean water. Once it's rinsed, then you want to dry it off and then it's ready to be placed back into the patient's stoma. The Provox brushes can be reused. Um, you want to make sure, however, that there aren't any loose bristles on the brush itself and that would be when you would throw the brush out and get a new brush. You can clean the brush with just soapy water and rinse it and let it air dry. An HME cassette should be disposed at least every 24 hours. There is a log that's included in the laryngectomy pulmonary kit in which you can log each time it is thrown away. However, sometimes patients, especially immediately postoperatively, go through more than one a day. If the patient notes that there is any increase in breathing resistance, that would also mean that you would throw the cassette out and put a new one on. If the patient goes to cough and there are secretions on the back of the cassette, you can gently wipe them away and put the HME back on the Larry tube. You never wanna rinse the HME cassette with any types of soap or water. There is an agent within the foam of the cassette that if you rinse it away, you rinse away that ability of that cassette to retain moisture. Plus, you also risk that there could be some bacteria growth on the HME cassette itself. Sometimes due to different types of reconstruction or physician preference, an optoderm base plate is used immediately postoperatively to house the HME instead of a Larry tube. The optoderm base plate is a hydrocolloid material that is designed to be worn while the patient is healing. Once the skin around the stoma has been cleaned and dried, you then take the optoderm base plate and rub it between your fingers in order to warm it up. Then you peel off the backing of the optoderm and you make sure that you center the inner ring of the optoderm onto the stoma itself. Then you place it onto the skin and you wanna make sure there aren't any wrinkles within the optoderm base plate and you use your fingers to gently smooth out any wrinkles within the base plate itself. 
the HME can be placed directly on the optoderm base plate. To remove the HME cassette from the optoderm base plate, it's really important to stabilize the optoderm base plate with two fingers while you gently remove the cassette from the inside of the optoderm base plate. Sometimes along with the optoderm, a physician will recommend using a blue ring Larry tube. And that Larry tube doesn't allow for any straps on the side of the Larry tube. So that blue ring Larry tube will then be placed inside the lumen of the optoderm and lock in place. If you need to remove the Larry tube with a ring from the optoderm base plate, again, it's important to stabilize the base plate with two fingers while you gently remove the Larry tube with a ring. Sometimes a voice prosthesis is placed at the time of surgery. So when you remove the Larry tube, you will be able to visualize the voice prosthesis about 12 o'clock within inside the stoma. If the voice prosthesis is not visible, it is very important to contact either the speech pathologist or the physician so that they can re either replace the prosthesis or put in a catheter stent to open the puncture because that puncture can close in a matter of hours to days, which would then require an additional surgery. You can see here in these pictures, the one on the left shows a picture of a voice prosthesis in place, and that is what you will see if the voice prosthesis is placed at the time of the surgery. The picture on the right actually is the puncture itself without a prosthesis in place. The voice prosthesis should be cleaned at least twice a day, or if there's any visual debris within the lumen of the voice prosthesis. You clean it with a brush and a flush. The brush is placed inside the lumen of the voice prosthesis and turned 360 degrees and then removed. The reason that you use the brush is that it helps loosen any debris. Then you need to follow it by using the Provox flush to flush away any debris that is within the voice prosthesis. What you will do when using the flush is you will insert the tip of the flush into the voice prosthesis, put some gentle forward pressure on it, squeeze the bulb of the flush that will flush any water through the voice prosthesis, release the bulb, let the bulb come back to normal, and then remove the flush from the voice prosthesis. This will flush away any debris that's within the voice prosthesis. If the voice prosthesis starts to leak, so when you go to drink water and you visually see liquid coming from the center of the voice prosthesis, or you're coughing frequently when eating or drinking, that can mean that your voice prosthesis is leaking. At this point, call your speech pathologist or your physician to have it changed. However, in the meantime, you can place a Provox plug in its place to stop the leaking. In order to do this, you would take the end of the brush, plug it into the plug, take the plug and push it into the center of the voice prosthesis. Then you remove the brush and you tape the strap of the plug to your neck to secure it to make sure it doesn't go in your airway. Using an HME is a really important uh, thing to maximize your pulmonary function and improve your quality of life. During your hospital stay, your nurses will provide you with training for how to care for your Larry tube, as well as how to use the HME cassette. You'll want to use that HME cassette 24-7. It's your new nose.